Hello, one, two, three, mic check, one, two, one, two. Hello, how are you guys? Good. You guys good? Yes. Guys like, um, sorry, I, I like rubbing my tummy now because it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only excuse I have to let it out. So I'm gonna get make full use of it. Um, all right, so um, we are going to continue our um, series of When the Fight Calls. <laughs> whoop, whoop. All right, and so, um, I mean, we're just gonna, we're just gonna like dive it into is that all right Woo. all right and so um so there's going to be two parts that i'm going to talk about um, today and so and i think um i believe it's not an accident that these two were um, put together in one verse um and so um because i think they just really come hand in hand together um not that all the other parts don't come hand in hand but i think it was just very fitting that these two were kind of smushed together and so um so before we dive uh, let's just go back to our verse i know we've read it like so many times already but it's okay because repetition is good amen. amen all right so we're gonna um yes so it's gonna be uh ephesians 6 13 to 17 so uh, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of, the, of evil comes, um, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So let's just let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God, just for this day, Lord. Thank you that you've um, gathered us all here, um, Lord, to just um, fellowship and just to hear your word and just to be in your presence, God. I pray, Lord, that you use me, Lord, as your vessel. Use me as your mouthpiece, Lord, to just speak your word um, tonight, Lord God. And I pray that um, you just move in this place, Lord. Um, I pray that the things that um, you speak tonight, Lord God, is just going to transform us, um, allow us to know you more, God and just to learn how to be more like you, Lord. And um, just thank you so much for your blessings, Lord. We love you, and I pray all this in Jesus' holy mighty name. Everybody say it. Amen. 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 All right, so let's do a, a review. So <laughs> what have we discussed so far? So we've discussed, yes. OK, what else? Yes, and what's the next one? Yes, yes, and one more? Yes, all right. And so the last ones that we're going to talk about are um, the, yes, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the first one. Um, so we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. Who likes to wear helmets? I don't. I really don't. I don't like to wear helmets. I remember, I just thought about this like right now because like I was like sitting and I remember, I was thinking about helmets, I was trying to think of like a thing. I wish I had a picture of it, but I don't. Um, sorry, Chris, I'm just totally calling you out right now. Um, so I, I like, like me and Mary used to like to rollerblade back when we were little kids and stuff. And so my, uh, we got everything, like the gear, the, the, hand, the hand pads or something. Oh or the hand pads and elbow pads, knee pads, all that stuff, right? I think you were like, what, four? Three or four years old when you started doing this? Mericus used to wear the ones where you put sh your shoes in. Oh. The old, the, the yeah. ones that make sounds, it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like yellow, <laughs> so it's like the, the really like kitty preschool ones. And so I used to, um, I used to wear like inline skates because I was just, oh just cool like that, right? <laughs> So my, the helmet I wore, it was like a cool purple Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse ones, it was like little Minnie Mouse ones in purple. I like this one because Mary was so cute. You guys know the one where, because uh, like Mary was really small, she had like a cute little round face. And then like, she was like, and then the, the helmet that she wore, um, it was <laughs> it was like butterflies. <laughs> it was like colorful, like colorful little butterflies. Mary just looked like, you know that um, in Mario Kart, that little mushroom? Yeah, toad. 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 Is that a mushroom? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Toad yeah so he's like, so the mushroom head, the head is really big and his face is really small. Yeah. That's what Mericus looked like. And I remember a picture that we had, we're like standing next to each other like this. And Mericus is like this. And then she's wearing like overalls with like up to here with a yellow shirt. I totally remember this. It was so cute. But we wore helmets. After that, I never wore helmets because like I was getting all aggressive and stuff. Like, yeah, like you know, grinding on the, on the curve. I don't, need, I don't need a helmet. <laughs> I think I hit my head once, like like I hit it like that, but after, I still don't wear helmets. I don't like wearing helmets. Um, just, just, you know, I just don't. I know we're supposed to, especially like if you're riding a bike and stuff, but it's okay, I don't really care. Anyways, that has nothing to do with anything, just the helmet, so I just wanna just call Mary Chris out real quick. And so, <laughs> so 
So helmets, right? So we've talked about all of this gear with the armor of God. So with, with the soldier, right? He puts everything, they put everything on already, like his breastplate, his like belt and his shoes. And then what's the other one? His shield, right? Mm -hmm. And then so usually when a soldier goes out before the battle, the last thing that he puts on is his helmet, right? And I feel like if you don't, like if you go into battle without a helmet, you're kind of like asking to be shot at, yeah. you know? Um, like you just, you're just not prepared, you're fully exposed. And like, um, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys play first person shooters and stuff, right? Headshots, man, are like the best. Cause they're like one shot kill, it's like boom, right? It's like, it's like done. Your queer friend was really good at that when he was playing like Call of Duty. And so, uh, it's, and I like doing that too. Like it's just, it's just, it just feels great. Like if you just hit the body, it's like you have to do it twice, but with the head, it's like one shot kill. Um, and so, so essentially, what does the helmet do? Protect. Yes, it protects your head, right? So it protects your head from any, like, of the enemy. So if there's any, like, blows or, like, damages of, like, arrows or, like, guns or whatever, like, um, it helps protect your head from, from all of that. And so um, it's pretty basic. That's what a helmet does, right? So the next part of the word, helmet, um, the next one is salvation. So um, you know, I'm sure all of us know what salvation is, but let's just talk about it. So what is salvation? Um, salvation is pretty much being being saved, right? Um, receiving deliverance. And so um, notice what Paul says um, about what we are saved from and what we are saved by. And so um, the next slide. Yes, so in Romans um, 5, 8 to 10, um, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were, when we were enemies, we were re reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And so notice um, when he says we shall be saved um, from wrath. And so like what, what is the wrath that we are saved from, right? So um, it's the wrath of God um, against sin. And so when we all know that God and sin don't mix, they're like oil and water, they just, it just, it just doesn't work. And so um, all of us, you know, we have fallen short of that. We have all sinned. And um, since we have sinned, there's a penalty for that, right? And so um, the penalty um, that we would face if we don't have the cross, if we don't have the, the, the sacrifice that Jesus um, did on that, it's eternal death. And so and we, we know Romans 6, um, 23, it's for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, so salvation and eternal life are free gifts that God um, desires to give to us, right? Just to give to humanity. And so now the question is, what does a helmet and um, salvation have to do with one another, um, right? And so spiritually speaking, um, the helmet of salvation provides um, hope. Um, it provides, uh, it protects our mind against anything that, um, that wants to like disorient or destroy um, our minds and our thoughts, right? And so anything that has to do with like discouragement, doubts, lies, deceit, all of that. Um, and I, and the enemy can like penetrate our mind with like lies and doubts about um, ourselves and even about the characteristics of God. And so, um, and also, like with the helmet, I think with the old school, like you know, the old, I'm talking about like the old school, like armor helmets and stuff like that. Um, you, it also protects like the eyes. I don't think you guys seen them, like the old school ones. Um, so it also protects the eyes of the soldiers. So in this context, when we we translate it to spiritually, um, it protects our spiritual vision, right? And so if our spiritual eyes are damaged, um, it's kind of hard to kind of set our eyes um, towards a goal. And I know sometimes we all get distracted, right, all, all the time. Um, when things go wrong, if there's trials that come our way, if pain kind of um, comes into our lives, it's kind of hard to move forward. We kind of are, we're kind of just stuck um, in, in where we're at because um, we're so consumed in that. And so, um, and that's one of the tactics of the enemy um, to kind of deter us from focusing on our goal and, and, and prevent us from focusing on Jesus, right? And so, but the thing is, um, when we know who we are in Christ and um, what he has done for us through his death and resurrection, that's the power that sustains us, amen? 
And so salvation is, is the goal like we must set our eyes on. So um, when you know like for real what God has saved you from, um, there's no lies of the enemy that can stop you at all. No, no lies of the enemy that can come against you. And um, the promise of salvation through Jesus' sacrifice, it never, ever fades away. It's like always there for you to, to receive. And, you know, it gives us stability even um, in, in a very broken and unshaken world. And it gives us hope in any circumstance that we go through. Amen? Amen. And so um, now, um, you know, speak with that. But, I, but again, like I said, um, we're going to have the second part. And those two come hand in hand. And I think um, in order us, in order for us to understand um, salvation, I think the next one is very important. And so, um, the next one we're going to talk about is the sword of the spirit. And so far, um, all of the parts that we've talked about has to do with defense, 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 right? And so, um, but the sword of the spirit does both. It does. It, it could be used as offense and defense. And so, for me, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Anybody? Oh my gosh, am I the only one? Yeah. Did you guys play Origins? Uh, the, the oh, yeah, because there's a, there's a new one coming. I'm so excited. I was like watching E3 and I was just so, gosh, I just nerded out a little bit. So I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. I played like four of them already. And then like I beat the, the latest one, Origins, and that has to do with like Egyptian, Egyptian oh. stuff, right? Oh, yeah, it's great. I love that game. It has great oh, graphics. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, so I finished that, like, I, a couple, like, months ago, it took me, a, it took me, it took me a long time to finish that game, but I beat it, even the DLC, all of them. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do on maternity leave, I'm going to play the new one, because it's coming out, like, close to, like, when my baby comes. Oh, yeah. So once I'm on maternity leave, I'm going to be playing, and I'm going to have a baby on my, my, my right, and I have a control the left. Huh? Uh, maybe? No, not yet. I don't think so. I still have side missions that I need to do. But. <laughs> Anyways, so I play, I play the game. I beat the game. So for me, I'm like the type. I'm a more of an offensive player, so I just like smash buttons. No, I'm not just kidding. Um, so I just, I like attack a lot. Like that's like the only thing like I do in that game. Um, but then it took, so it took me a long time to play defense um, with it. it. I kind of like started learning about it like towards the end of it. Um, when I was close to finishing. Um, so with the, when, I don't know if you guys have seen like people like fight with swords, like um, when, they, when they do the defense, it's called parrying, right? So like, so when, when the enemy like hits, you kind of like hit them back with it and it kind of like slikes them out and they're like, ooh, right? And so that gives you an opportunity to like, um, to, to attack. So Isabella, yeah. what up? Hi Isabella. Yeah, I made it. Um, <laughs> And so, um, so parry with my sword or my or, or my uh, yeah my shield or something like that. It was it was really difficult. But that's how you deflect um, the attack of the enemy, right? And so it's pretty much the same thing when it comes to with, with the sword of the spirit. Um, you use it to um, attack the the enemy, right? So kind of like if there if there's if the enemy's like saying something, you're like it's true. Use it as a defense as well, and obviously defend yourself from the enemy's attack. And so um, in the passage, Paul defines the sword of the spirit as the word of God. And I think we've seen in different parts of the Bible um, where the word of God is described as a sword. So in um, Hebrews 4.12, I think I have a verse for that. Right? I have a verse. I don't know if I do. Oh, I don't. Okay, never mind. So Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Um, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God can be used as a way to attack, attack. <laughs> attack thoughts and actions that are not of God and also defend us from the lies and the schemes of the enemy. And I think Jesus like, like did it like perfectly. Like he fully demonstrated how valuable it is to be grounded in the word of God. And so I don't know if you guys have your Bibles with you. But I'll have it up here anyways. I hope it's, I think it's like small. But let's um, flip to Matthew 4. Um, but it'll be up here. Is it small? Can you guys read it? Yeah. Lightweight? Okay. I know, it's all smudgy. But it's okay. I can read it out loud. 
Okay, so so just to give context, so this is the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. And so before that, um, this is when Jesus kind of started his ministry, right? And so um, he just got baptized um, by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Um, and then so now the Spirit has led him into the wilderness. And so, um, so yeah, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give, to, I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended to him. So let's just dissect this real quick um, with what's going on here. So. Again, so verses one to three. Um, so Jesus was led into the led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, right? And so he fasted for like forty days. Um, I don't know. I, I fast. I tried fasting like once or twice, and I can't do it. I don't. And I can't even. Can you guys do that? Forty days? No food. No water. Yeah. No. I know. I love my food. And so I, I can't do that. So just imagine how Jesus is in that moment. Like I don't. Like one or two like days. Like it's already like crazy right but 40 days and 40 nights no food no water like that he must be like you know going crazy right so um and so with here um satan knew fully well what um, jesus christ that jesus was the son of god um and uh, but if you've noticed that every single time that he spoke to jesus he kind of um started like started an attack with like if you are the son of god Right, so he kind of wanted to pull Jesus away from his dependence upon the Father and um, the realization that he was there to do his Father's will. Right, but every single time that the that Satan came up with an attack, um, Jesus was able to defend himself and refute um, Satan's uh, attack by Scripture, by the Word of God. So. Um, but he answered um, and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus, like, so at that time, there's no New Testament, there's no gospel and all that, all that stuff. There's, it wasn't written yet. So the only thing that they had was the Old Testament. And so Jesus um, knew his word clearly. And so he quoted Deuteronomy 8.3, which pretty much shows like what Jesus' prior, um, priorities were. And so Satan came up with another attack, right? Um, the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, again, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give the angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And so with this one, Jesus also knew, like, this, this was not a complete, like, um, verse. Um, cause he, um, he, the Satan was quoting Psalms 91, 11 to 12. And so there's one thing that Satan left out when he was, you know, attacking Jesus with scripture. Um, so, uh, let's see, he had verse, it would be Psalms 91, 11. So, um, it, it would be for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So that's the thing that Satan left out. And Jesus knew that. And so the idea, um, here is that, um, with the, with the verse is that God is going to send angels to protect when it's needed. Not that you should like, you know, sacrifice yourself or like throw yourself just because you're trying to test God, right? Just so God can save you. Um, and so Jesus saw that. He saw what, what Satan was doing and he said, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again, he's, he's quoting Deuteronomy 16, um, 616. And so Satan made one more final attempt Again, the devil took him upon a um, really high mountain, showed him the, all the kingdoms and everything. And um, what did he say? He said, all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me, right? And then, um, so, so Satan is just laying everything out on the table. Um, and so the point of all these attacks was for Jesus to worship Satan and to forget about his father, 
right? And so obviously the final answer, Jesus is just good at his word, right? And so he just he just used it again. And he goes like, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And this is, and he's quoting Deuteronomy 6.13. So in the end, Satan failed at um, unseating Jesus as the ruler. Um, and in this case, it kind of shows that Jesus um, skillfully knew um, and used a thorough knowledge of scripture to pretty much deflect and parry um, everything that Satan was um, giving him, right? And so... So with this piece of armor, um, the sword of the spirit, I believe it's the most difficult one that we have to equip. Um, I can be the first to admit that this one is hard to do. Um, it's hard to maintain. It's hard to read the Bible, right? <laughs> like it's like really, really hard like, to read the Bible consistently. Um, sometimes, you know, we get really, really tired. We don't want to do it. We had a long day at work or school or whatever. We just don't want to read it. Um, sometimes the Bible is just really hard to understand. Um, the language is just so different from the language that we know. Like we just don't know what's going on. We just kind of, we just like don't want to deal with it, right? Um, or sometimes we get like distracted by other things. Like honestly, like for me, sometimes I just want to play video games and watch TV and sleep in my bed and read my Bible. Guilty, you know? Um, but the thing is, like, if we want to know who God is, we and if, like, if we want to know His characteristics, His truth, His promises, and, and if I'm connecting it to the helmet of, of salvation, if we want to know salvation and why it's so important for us, um, we need to read yeah. the Bible. Like, that's it's pretty much it. And I know it's just it's it's not just a book um, full of words. It's God speaking to us. Um, and and I, I and I say this all the time. It's God's love letter to humanity. And so, um, you know, we all have relationships, right? Whether it's like romantic, we have like just friendships or relationship with our parents, right? So we, we all are relational like human beings. And so, um, but the thing is, in order for us to keep a relationship going, um, we have to communicate, right? We need to spend quality time with each other to get to know each other. Um, and I, you know, you can't really know someone if you don't talk to them, right? Like it just, it just doesn't, doesn't work out like that. And so, you know, same thing with our relationship with God. Um, well, we'll never understand who God is, why he does the things that he does, um, why he loves us. Um, if we don't take the time to kind of just sit down with him, um, speak to him and listen to what he has to say through his word. Um, and then sometimes I know we always complain like, why God, like, why are you so quiet when I need you right now? Like, why are you doing these things? And so there was um, a, there was a quote that I saw. Um, there was a quote, and it was also like an article um, that I was reading on a Christian site. Um, and the the title of the um, the article was "Don't say God is silent if your Bible is closed." And I was like, <laughs> "Darn!" You know, <laughs> I like hits, right? Um, you know, we always say it. We, we get that some. Like I get in that moment. So I'm like, I, why, like, "Why are you so silent, God? Like I pray, I ask you these things, but you don't say anything to me." And I'm like. Oh, that's fine. I don't say I don't say anything to you because you're not opening my word, um, you know. And so, like, um, we can't say that God is silent if we if we close if the Bible's closed, right? And so, uh, we're not able to hear from God um, if we don't take um, the discipline and the initiative to just be like, Lord, like I'm just gonna, you know, I just want to read your word right now and just be with you. Um, and and I think in, yeah, so in order for him to respond, because I know we pray, right? We pray, we ask God um, for these things, but in order to hear a response, we need to have his word open, amen? And so, um, and I think the word of God, like um, we also use it to discern, right? So how do we know if it's God talking or if it's the enemy talking? Because clearly with, you know, Matthew 4, um, Satan knew the word of God, like he knew it. Um, he used it, um, to, to attack Jesus. And, um, and also even in the garden, in the garden of Eden when the serpent was there, um, like Adam and Eve had close relationship with, with, with the Lord, like they walked with him and they knew, um, they, they spoke to him like face to face and um, he told them point blank what they, what they should or should not do. Um, but Satan, yeah, serpent came and started to uh, manipulate the, the words that, that, that um, God was saying. And so um, again, he knew like it was kind of it was kind of true, but then it was kind of just like half truths. And so um, Satan is is uh, very good at 
using the words that we know that God uses to speak to us to kind of manipulate it and kind of turn it into half-truths. So we kind of think like, oh, like, that kind of sounds right. So we kind of, and guilty as charged, sometimes we listen to the enemy more than we listen to the one who wrote the Bible. You know, and it's it's and it, it's and it's scary. And but um, so that's why, like, I think diving into the word um, is so so you know what the Lord is saying, the promises that He's saying, the truths that He's saying. Um, even if you want to know who you are, you read because like God says clearly who you are. Because there's some things that the enemy is going to tell you lies about you um, um, that that the Lord didn't say or kind of like twist things that the Lord may say. But when you dive into this. This has everything. This tells you who you are in Christ and how Christ sees you. And so, um, with that being said, you know, thank God that we have Jesus, right? Um, he is our ultimate, ultimate example of truth and of grace. He is the word of God in the flesh. Um, you know, the Bible that the Israelites knew, the, the Old Testament, Jesus lived it perfectly. Um, he is the one who we should look to to imitate. And um, I think if we were in Jesus' position in the wilderness, I think we would all fail. Like really, like already, like maybe day two of fasting, I would fail. But um, but if, uh, let's see, oh, um, but Jesus was the only one who kind of successfully passed that test, the only human that was able to pass that test. And um, he was the only one who um, fulfilled and upheld the laws that we could not and so, um, so Jesus is, is the perfect example of what it means to be human and what it, how it is to live um, a life um, imitating Christ. And so um, for me, like the way we equip ourselves in spiritual warfare, you know, we need all of these things, right? But um, I think in order to successfully um, uh, go through spiritual, um, a spiritual battle, spiritual warfare, um, we must follow the example of Jesus. And I think everything that he is, like, um, go back, like he, all the things that are described um, uh, with the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, the shoe of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, salvation, the uh, sword of the spirit, that's all Jesus. Jesus has all of those characteristics. And so I feel like, you know, Jesus is our, ult is our ultimate armor of God. So when we put him on, um, you know, we're able to go into spiritual warfare um, fully successfully as long as we're obedient um, to, to his will. And so um, I think the two things that I just want to encourage you guys today um, is, and probably even challenge you is just, is one, um, to have fellowship with God, to pray, um, to have your moment, um, you know, with God, to, to read to read his word, like really, that just is, it's just so important. Um, it just, when you're in the presence of God, um, just even just like wait for like what for five ten minutes, just just praying and just kind of speaking to the Lord. There's just this this presence that like comes over you, and you just you just feel some some hope and just um, just know that you feel like you're comforted. I don't know, like I just it's just like a weird a weird feeling. And so um, fellowship with God is just so important. Try to keep it consistent. Like just just give him, just give Him your time, even in the morning. Um, when you're driving or something, like I, I pray when I'm driving. I don't close my eyes though. Don't do that. Um, I think I've done it once, but yeah, no. When at the stop, at the stop, not when you're driving. But fellowship with God is so important, and two, having fellowship with other people. Um, when you're um, in a community of people who are like-minded, who can encourage you, um, if you're feeling. Um, even even rebuke. I know sometimes we don't want to listen to rebuke, but sometimes it helps um, when a fellow Christian, you know, um, helps you. Like if we're going through something and you're like you just like oh, you need you need to be told something. It's like okay. Um, but having fellowship with other people in community um, is just so important. Like especially like it just helps you um, build relationships with each other. Um, and you know, like you're at the Jessa, Like I I try I try. I'm very bad. I'm so sorry. She she gone. Oh, she left. Dang. Well, she always tried to hang out with me, but I'm always so busy and stuff. I feel bad, but it's it's important when you have fellowship with fellow Christians. It's just it just it's just nice to be um, in a community where you guys get to speak about Jesus, pray for each other, encourage one another, because um, like that's what's going to how you can't you being a Christian you can't do it by yourself. You really can't. It's impossible to do this by yourself. So you need one. We need one another to uplift one another and kind of remind um, 
uh, us of like, you know, just who, what Jesus has done, who Jesus is in our lives. And it's always nice to, to have your fellow Christians just have, just to speak about God, yeah. right? And so the two, those are the two things I just, um, yeah, I challenge you guys to, to do and just to encourage you guys to do, um, hopefully on a consistent basis, just to have fellowship with God um, and fellowship with other people. Amen. Amen. All right, so just let us pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again, Lord God, um, that you just brought us here, Lord God. Um, just thank you just for this time, Lord, that we got to hear your word, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you just, um, that we, that we, discipline ourselves lord god just to put on the armor of god lord god to put you on lord god to have you in our hearts lord god because you are perfection lord god you are the ultimate truth you are the ultimate grace lord god and um, you are the ultimate example of what it means to be human and what it means to live a life obedient to the father god you are the prime example lord god and i pray lord that you um you guide us lord god provide us wisdom lord god and um transform us, Lord God, that we may live a life um, more like you, Lord God, um, so that people who still have yet to know who you are, Lord God, can see you in us, Lord God. And so, Lord, just we just want to thank you, Lord God, just for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord God, that is never ending, Lord God. Thank you for your mercies that are so new every single day, Lord God, just for giving a, us a reset um, every single day, Lord. And, um, we just love you so much. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. We just love you and I pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.